Hi everyone, today let's talk about Janet Yellen's trip to China, then we'll talk about a possible banking consolidation, as well as the economic calendar, and Max Payne. Then we'll get into the charts, as well as my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Janet Yellen went to China in order to reestablish some semblance of economic normalcy in our relations, and supposedly she did so. She said things went fairly well, and that both sides indicated plans to continue talks. She's only the second high-ranking member of the cabinet to go over this month, as Anthony Blinken went over earlier after the issues with the spy balloon. They did mention that they plan to continue effective communications between China and the United States in order to establish a new normal that will hopefully be less volatile for both markets. They said that their differences might not be so far apart as was previously thought, which is a little bit reassuring. Obviously, this could just be commentary and we don't actually know what was said, but it was a little bit reassuring. The Chinese asked for some tariffs to be removed and for the U.S. to stop pressuring Chinese companies. However, the United States is still mulling over restrictions on high-end Chinese tech. Overall, it seems like they've moved in the direction of preventing escalation, which is definitely beneficial from the economic perspective. We want, we want the two countries to get along as trade does make both countries richer and take a little bit of un, the unknown out of the markets. Moving over to the possible banking consolidation, this comes on the heels of interest rates going higher, as well as some of the regional banks going bankrupt. JP Morgan Chase bought First Republic, as well as all of its assets, which effectively ended the crisis, at least in the short term. However, rates have continued to rise, squeezing the bond holdings of these banks, and it's not impossible that some of these other banks could go out of business. We have 4,672 lenders in the United States, which is way more than any other of the G7 countries. And it is not crazy to think that they might consolidate a little bit to make some larger regional banks, which seem to be faring a little bit better. Regionals overall are down about 25%, whereas the bigger banks are down only 10%. And once SVB went down, that created some more stress. And as rates have gone higher, they have been under more stress with lots of paper losses with their bond holdings going down as yields continue to rise. It is worth noting that total deposits did start to rally here a little bit from April into June, which is good as we saw them declining from April of last year. Overall, that should stabilize the banking market at least a little bit. Then they get into the walking wounded, which is all of these banks with paper losses holding those bonds as well as the total number of banks way higher than any of the other G7 countries like we talked about. And if these banks were to lose 10-20% to 20 of their deposits, they would be in a pretty tough spot. Overall, it doesn't seem crazy that these might consolidate a little bit, as long as it's not in a very explosive way or too many all at the same time. Moving over to the economic calendar, not much here for today. A couple of Fed members talking about raising rates. Tomorrow we have Bullard. I'm sure he will also talk about raising rates. Three-year note tomorrow, expected to be around 4.2%. And then Wednesday, the big one here with CPI, core and headline, expected to be quite a bit lower than the previous read. Core year over year at 5% versus 5.3. That would be a pretty substantial step down if we got that expectation. And then headline expected to step down to 3.1 from 4%. That would be a huge step down in my opinion. And I don't think it's really getting talked about enough. We're expecting almost a 1% step down in headline inflation from the previous month. Core still quite sticky, but headline stepping down quite a lot. Moving over to Max Payne, sitting at 440 for this week. Got over 700,000 up to 827 for total options, so pretty decent amount now. Put call ratio still at 1.85, but that is a little bit elevated because of these bigger puts down here. In terms of the ones right around the money, it looks fairly even, if not lower than one, because of all of these calls here. We have multiple very high call strikes. I wouldn't expect to finish the week above 442. This is very high, much higher than we've seen here recently in comparison to the puts. Highest put strike down here at 430, and it wouldn't surprise me to finish somewhere in this region here between 430 and 440, which doesn't give us a lot of upside for the weekly close from current prices. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the hour and the daily, you can see we hit that 200 SMA, rallied, 
still below 439.98. We are above trend, which is what you should be playing off of for now. But we're below that 55 EMA momentum, turning down a little bit here after hours. RSI basically at that zero level. Certainly could pull back, hit these EMAs, and then rally above the 55. That would be quite bullish. And this is starting to wedge up a little bit, in my opinion. You can see we have a high, slightly higher high with a low, higher low. Could rally back into this zone over the next few days, break down from there and start to wedge up certainly possibility overall going into tomorrow i would expect a little bit more bullishness you need to see it get above 339.98 hold in that level and then rally back into these previous resistance areas but like i said i would still expect a rejection from there going into the end of the week watching for that 442 high and a push down below that level to close Moving over to the queues, similar setup, came down, tested my 364.84 level, chopped in that zone, rallied up, four nice bullish candles in a row. Still looking at that 55 EMA, and you need it to hold this zone, rally above 367.63 before we look for a rally up to this most recent high. Absolutely could do that. We're above the 21 EMA after testing it as well as trend here on the 12 hour chart. Momentum still bearish, but we are at a key support level, and I am currently risking off of that 364.84 level, as well as the 200 SMA at 365.24. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, you can see the Russell took off like a rocket. We have a low, higher low setup, looking to retest these highs for a third time, could break out. Momentum and RSI, both super bullish. Not much to say, everything looks good here on the Russell. Dow also showing bullishness above 339.11, looking to break trend resistance. Momentum ticking towards bullish, volume stepping up here today. From Friday, everything looks good. Watching that 55 EMA as resistance at 339.90 and the 21 sitting up at 340.85. Moving over to Apple and Tesla. Apple looking much weaker here recently. We're back below the 55 EMA, something we haven't seen on the four hour chart since May of this year. Breaking down from trend, did hold the 186.81 level, so you could trade off of that. Not too bad. Momentum cooling off to the downside. RSI still bearish. Volume did step up a little bit. You want to see that start to follow through to the upside. Maybe this turns into a double top at 193.96. Certainly could happen. Then we break back down below this midpoint and start to see a more substantial pullback on Apple. Right now, still looks a little bit weak with a possible support level here. Tesla, on the other hand, starting to wedge up, kind of like we talked about on the SPY. If it holds this trend support, rally back up to around 292, break down from there, hold support one more time, get that last gasp, and then we see a bigger breakdown on Tesla. Certainly seems like a possible setup. Momentum still bearish, RSI still bearish, so you want to see that start to turn here to the upside before you start to get too long. But there was a nice wick rejection off of the 55 EMA at 264.50. Moving over to Microsoft and Amazon. Both of these are showing more weakness than we've seen here recently. Still looks like a bit of a double bottom here on Microsoft, but we have a lower high, a clear break of horizontal resistance before we rallied into the close. And we're just at that 144 EMA once again at 331.43. First time we've tested that in quite a while here. So again, looking weaker on Microsoft. Similarly here on Amazon, breaking down from resistance right at horizontal support at 127.19. Certainly could hold in that zone and then rally back into this previous high. And you can absolutely trade off of that level. But we are below all of the shorter term EMAs here on the four hour chart. Momentum bearish, RSI also bearish, volume picking up a little bit on that big red candle. So some of the mega caps are definitely showing more weakness than we've seen in a while. Moving over to staples and discretionary. Staples throwing a wick to 74, rejecting, holding in the zone. Not much to say, basically unchanged from the Friday session. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. Still consolidating in this zone and above trend support, but below all the EMAs and SMAs. Discretionary, also starting to wedge up a little bit. Kind of looks like Tesla. Very similar as this rally is mostly built on Tesla. Above all the EMAs and SMAs. Momentum moving more towards bullish. RSI still bullish. Looks good. Looking for a push up to 173.78. Moving over to healthcare and oil and gas. Healthcare showing a little bit of rally here today. Engulfing candle back above 129.54 after that pretty bloody red session here on healthcare. 
Certainly could look for a rally up to 131.23. Not a huge move. Healthcare doesn't move too much, but it does look like a nice higher low setup, potentially a rally up into this previous zone. Oil and gas continues to make higher lows and higher highs. Looks pretty good. We're above the 144 EMA here, rallying after hours, looking for a push up to 135.07. Moving over to transports just for a moment, held this level, rallied into the close, looking to break out and go higher here. Looking at that weekly chart, looks like we're above these previous highs now, looks good. And this should start to rally into this previous consolidation. Everything looks good for transports to continue to go higher. Moving over to breadth here on the 20 and 200 day averages. 20 day been chopping in this zone for a little bit. We're at clear resistance. This is basically the top of the 20 day average. That's about as high as it goes. Anytime you get into this zone, you usually get some kind of rejection. And that has happened here, but we continue to hold between these two levels. And it can do that for a while. Looks like we're going to rally back up into that zone tomorrow or the next day. And it could absolutely top out with CPI on Wednesday. 200 day average also rallying looking for 6474 if that level breaks it's quite a bit of room up to the next high which would be very dramatic and you can also see that same kind of wedge pattern here potentially looking for a push just above that resistance start to consolidate overthrow it and then break down similar to what we talked about on tesla again indicating more upside to come in the next day or two moving over to yields two year and 10 year pulling back Two-year, we kind of thought that was going to happen. Ten-year, less so. Nice engulfing candle. Looks more bearish. Want to see that get below 4% and really below my 3.97 level. Momentum, bearish. RSI pulling back from overbought conditions on both of these. Overall, looks like we might see a little bit more weakness on both of these. Obviously, that's going to be dictated by CPI. If CPI comes back light, then we could see this pull back a little bit more and we could see equities go higher. Moving over to the dollar, basically did exactly what we thought, chopped a little bit, found some support, broke back down to trend. We expected some follow through, bearish momentum, bearish RSI, and really I expect this to break back down to these previous lows at 101.25. So yields going lower, dollar going lower, pushing equities higher. Moving over to J&K and TLT. J&K finding some support with yields going lower. TLT similarly through a wick to these lows, starting to rally a little bit. Still bearish on both of them below all of the EMAs and SMAs on both charts. But like I said, finding a little bit of support with yields going lower. And it wouldn't surprise me if both of these continue to go a little bit higher tomorrow before we hit any kind of resistance. Moving over to the volatility indices, you can see the move index rallied slightly, basically unchanged. VIX, on the other hand, gapped up, hit the 200 SMA on the four hour chart, rejected back down. We did close above 1490, which is interesting. We're still holding that level. If markets are going to go much higher, you want to see it break below that and start to see this trend break down a little bit more. You could argue this is a lower high on the VIX and that it should break down a little bit more. But if it comes down, hits the 21 and rallies, that's going to be a higher low as well. And you can start to see this push up to 1850, which obviously would be bearish for equities. Momentum, basically zero. RSI hitting the SMA and breaking down. Still above the 50 line, but breaking down a little bit more than you would expect. If it was going to rally higher tomorrow, still a bullish trend, but showing some signs of weakness. Moving over to my accounts, I made a few dollars, not as much as I should have on the IWM. It moved pretty fast and I wasn't watching it. I did get a covered call where I made a few dollars, 54 here on the shares that I purchased, plus the put that I had going into the day, sold a 188 call for a dollar, looking to get out of these shares at 189. That would be about $150 profit if that happens. Q's on the other hand, similar thesis. Bought 200 shares, sold two calls at 366 for a dollar 42, looking to get at least 300 dollars in credit off of those, along with this put here at 365 for 98 cents. So nice little profit there if we get a little bit of a rally, but I am still risking off of that 365 level. If the market falls to that level, I should be able to make a little bit of money either way, but I am really looking for the market to go higher tomorrow. Let me know down in the comments section what you thought of Janet Yellen's trip to China. Is everything good with them now or is it all fake news? Also, do you think the banks will consolidate 
or will we see more regional banks go under due to potential real estate issues? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.